नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म सिंह हॉर्टिकल्चर फाउंडेशन बी एस एच एफ ए नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड माई सेल वेलकम यू ऑल टू द टॉक नंबर फोर्टीन ऑफ दिस सीरीज थ्री एच दैट इज हॉर्टिकल्चर फॉर हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस बी एस एच एफ इज थैंकफुल to syngenta patanjali ayurved limited and nhrdf to sponsor this webinar series i welcome co organizer dr pritam kalia icr rafi ahmed kidwai awardi and former head division of vegetable science iari new delhi the talk this evening is on phytochemicals in grapes for human health by dr v b patel principal scientist horticulture icr iri new delhi bshf is thankful to dr v b patel to honor its request to deliver the webinar despite of his uh, personal and official busy schedule bshf and myself welcome dr r g som kumar director icr nrc grapes pune who is kind enough to participate in this webinar at a very short notice and i am sure he will add value to it friends grapes You all know अंगूर जो हिंदी में हम कहते हैं is an ancient fruit or berry and uh, ancient uh, for um, ancient you require a proof for that the proof is there that if you see the archaeological uh, monuments very old one you find their grape and wine they are there you can easily find it. and uh, fruit is uh, nutritionally rich which adds not only to palatability but the pride of the consumer as well as producer grape khane wala kehta hai maine grape khaya hai producer kehta hai ki i am above the other farmers i am a grape grower i am not a ordinary person and grape is a seeded one seedless also and different color green red purple and other shades of this and it is eaten fresh and raisin as dessert in the form of juice also as a freshener and i told you about the wine etc wine w i n e from wine crop v i n e interesting one and uh, in other countries you have wine yards mice together anyway our country also in maharashtra you find large wine yards dr v b patel would educate us this evening on these aspects and share other information useful to grape stakeholders which would be supplemented by as i told you director nrc grape dr r g som kumar the speaker dr v b patel would be introduced by dr pritam kalia question can be raised in hindi or english they will be answered after the session or the after the presentation by dr v b patel now i request dr kalia to introduce the speaker please dr kaliya ji dr kaliya ji jago hmm, something some some problem with dr kaliya dr kaliya uh, can you hear me dr kaliya 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are waiting. Start introducing. Introduce okay, Dr. Sir. Patel. Uh, otherwise, I will start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most respected uh, uh, Chairman BSHF, Professor Brahm Singh Ji, uh, Director NRC Grapes, and today's speaker, Dr. Vivi Patel, who will be talking on phytochemicals in grapes for human health. It's my proud privilege to introduce the speaker who has had his uh, graduation from Chandrasekhar Ajad University of Agriculture and Technology, Kanpur, and has his master's from G.B. Panth University of Agriculture and Technology, Panthanagar. He had his doctorate from IRI New Delhi. Dr. Patel started his career as a scientist at IERI in 2000. And in between, in 2011, he joined Bihar Agriculture University, Sabor, as a professor come chief scientist, where he became chairman of the horticulture department and also served as associate director research of the university. Dr. Patel has contributed significantly in different uh, in developing leaf sampling technique and the leaf nutrient standards or guide for grape, citrus, bear, guava, lychee, peach, pear, and also the fertilizer recommendation for Sir, your mic is muted, sir. Ramma Singh, sir, your mic is muted. Please unmute. Please unmute. Chairman, Chairman, sir, unmute yourself first. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, sir. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Patel yes, sir. Uh, has significant significantly yes, sir. Yes, contributed. Sir, but uh, yes, sir, you uh, continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also, yes, sir. Uh, he has contributed towards uh, fertilizer recommendations for mango, bear, citrus, grape, and guava. He has released uh, the technology for high density planting and nutrient management through organic means in mango. He has identified a new disorder in mango stem and blackening. Uh, Dr. Patel was associated with the development of protocol for biohardening of tissue culture and uh, uh, of uh, uh, tissue culture raised grapes plantlets and use of AMF for uh, alleviating abiotic stresses. Dr. Patel was associated with the development of uh, four grape hybrids, namely Pusa Swarnika, Pusa Aditi, Pusa Trishar, and uh, Pusa Purple Seedless. One variety each of Bale, Sabor Bale 1, and Makhana, Sabor Makhana 1, he was also associated with. Dr. Patel was associated with the formulation of uh, uh, National Horticulture Mission and 11th Plan Program in Horticulture of Government of India and organized three ICR summer or winter schools, eight other training programs as a course director, or chairman, 10 seminar symposia as organizing secretary or core team member. Uh, he has guided eight MSc and two PhD students as chairman and 12 PhD students as member of their advisory committees. Dr. Patel has over 200 publications, including 78 research papers, 15 books, and five practical manuals to his credit. Dr. Patel, visited Taiwan for an advanced training also. 
He is a recipient of several uh, prestigious awards, namely Agriculture Leadership Award uh, of Agriculture Today (IFCA) and Harigom Ashram Trust Award of ICR, Lal Bahadur Shastri Young Scientist Award of ICR, GL Chadha, uh, GL Chadha Memorial Gold Medal of IEHS, DP Ghosh Award of IEHS, Best Research uh, Researcher Award of BAU Sabor, Young Scientist Awards by NAS, Government of Uttar Pradesh, and Indian Society for Plant Physiology. Besides, he has to his credit uh, best research papers, oral or poster presentation awards by different organizations. Dr. Patel is a fellow of the Indian Academy of Horticultural Sciences, Indian Society for Noni Sciences, and associate of the National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. At very young stage, Dr. Patel has contributed very significantly and has been honored accordingly accordingly because of his uh, significant contribution to the field he has worked in. Therefore, uh, he, I invite him to deliver today's talk on phytochemicals in grapes for human health. Dr. Patel, please. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, your nice words and introducing elaborately about my contributions. Uh, Respected uh, Professor Brahm Singh, sir, Padamsri Wadi, and Chairman of the Brahm Singh Horticulture Foundation, Dr. Som Kumar, Director of Narasi Grape, Professor Kalya, former Head of the Vegetable Science and Professor of Horticulture at IARI. A very good evening, a very good evening to all of you who are present today in this talk, and also. Particularly, I am grateful to Mr. Ram Singh sir for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all regarding the grapes and their nutritional or phytochemicals value for their for human health. So, as you are aware, uh, just a minute, I will share my slides. So I will be talking about phytochemicals in grapes for human health. As you are aware that uh, due to rapid urbanization, you can see here the pictures related to urbanization and industrialization, and also the increase in work-related stress and poor and unhealthy diets. These all together, they are causing the NCDs, that is non-communicable diseases, in the humans and these non communicable diseases are causing almost it accounts for about 40 million deaths each year and that is equivalent to 70 percent death of all humans population at global level so if you look at this one the more than 15 million people die from the ncds between the age of 30 and 69 years and that is one of the alarming more than 35 percent or even 40 percent deaths are due to the NCD, non communicable diseases, and the age that is the most productive age of the people they are going because of these diseases. And 77% of all NCDs deaths are not in poor, not in rich country, but it is in poor and middle income countries. And this COVID 19 pandemic also added to the severity of the NCDs because of the disruption in the cardiovascular emergencies, cancer treatment. Uh, asthma services, diabetes and diabetes complications management, and even hypertension management. This report I have taken from the WHO uh, report in, released in April 2021. And if you look at the uh, deaths due to the NCDs, it is four diseases that causes almost all 80% deaths. It is cardiovascular disease at number one, causing about 20 million deaths annually, followed by cancer, about 10 million dead, respiratory disease, 4 million, and diabetes, 1.5. So all these four contributes to an alarming situation. And 
what they cause in fact they affect the metabolic risks and they create the raised blood pressure overweight and obesity hyperglycemia where we have high blood glucose levels and hyperlipidemia where we have high levels of fat in the blood and what are the principal cause behind these ncds it is the uh, low intake of the fruits and vegetables and the studies shows the studies conducted by world health organization as well as food and agriculture organization jointly and with some other organizations also that up to 3.9 million lives could be saved if we eat fruits and vegetables in our daily diets and also they have recommended that at least we should eat uh, we should have fruits and vegetables at least five times in our daily intake so worldwide it has been estimated that 70 uh, 31% heart disease and about 19% of gastrointestinal cancer and 11% of stroke is due to uh, low fruits and vegetable intake and if we enhance the this uptake it may be avoided and if you look at the dietary guidelines of the different nations now they are realizing the importance of fruits and vegetable and they they are saying that dietary patterns play an important role in prevention of the ncds particularly which are chronic one and they have already prepared the healthy eating plans and they have made their dietary guideline to include fruits and vegetables or enhance the consumption of fruits and vegetables in their diet and in fact the international year of fruits and vegetables is being celebrated this year basically for the uh, their nutritive value fruits and vegetables value and their enhancement of their consumption in the societies or human population so why why different organizations are involving themselves for pro for promoting fruits and vegetables in human diet because they contain array of phytochemicals you name the phytochemicals it is present in the fruits and vegetable be it phenolics carotenoids ascorbic acid tocopherols isothiocyanates gluco isolates particularly those compounds which are not present in the cereals and pulses and this one you will get a lot of uh, minerals and vitamins and phytochemicals in these fruits and vegetables that can protect from the different chronic diseases so let us know that what are the phytochemicals they are basically known as phytonutrients and phytonutraceuticals and they are naturally occurring chemicals other than traditional nutrients and they elicit the response in the human metabolism leading to the improvement of human health more than 8000 phytochemicals has already been identified and numbers are still increasing because because of uh, processes like hydroxylation glycosylation methoxylation and acylation reactions it different compounds are formed even new compounds are still under the discovery phase that are having the a lot of human health properties and the chemicals which are broadly phytochemicals are divided into six groups and phenolics is one of the important compounds having the phenolic acid is still been flavonoids lignans coumarins tannins so alkanoids are another groups nitrogen containing compound organosulfur compounds phytoesters and carotenoids these all constitute phytochemicals that are helpful in enhancing our health now coming to the grape it is one of the most tastiest fruit i would say and widely cultivated fruit in the world and uh, although it is cultivated in many countries in the world but five countries china italy spain france and usa these commands almost 50% of the grape production worldwide which is currently being uh, cultivated in 7.4 million hectare with a production of 77.8 million tons annually and uh, these grapes as bramsing sir said in his introduction that these are used for wine purpose table purpose and for other purposes like dried grapes and different processing uses so 57% of this grape earlier was 80% for europe almost you can see the france germany and even spain they are about 80% of grapes are goes for the wine production and globally 57% of grape produced is used for wine making 36% of grapes particularly in india we have about more than 80% in egypt almost 95% grapes are being used for table purpose 
so this is the scenario of grapes grapes have got rich source of carbohydrate uh, high calorie high calorie content and it has exceptional source of magnesium potassium and it is a very good source of vitamin b6 c thiamine and very rich source of the polyphenols and we in fact grape is cultivated recently in almost six decade or even you can say that about uh, one century old the commercial grape growing started in we say it in 60s and when we had about 800 hectare area the varieties were cultivated started cultivating in the north india as well as in andhra pradesh region and tamil nadu region and in a few pockets of maharashtra but over the period because of its rarity value grape increased from 0.8 uh, 0.8000 hectare means 100 hectare to 140000 hectares in 2020 with a production of about 3.12 million tons of grapes so if you look at the change about uh, change in six decades about it has uh, 17 more than 17000% change in area and more than 31000 percent change in the production with the productivity change in about 80 percent and grape is one of the crop which has been growing at a steady rate and you will find that average compounded annual growth rate in grapes during the past 60 decade it is about 9.2 percent in area and 10.12 percent in the production so phyto like other fruits and vegetable phytochemicals in grapes are also abundantly found and grape skin seed and juice now stems are also being used as a source of phytochemicals particularly for the phenolic stem for phenolic extractions and uh, these are phytochemicals are synthesized by three secondary metabolite pathway one is the isoprenoid pathway alkanoid biosynthesis route and phenyl propionoid routes through which the phytochemicals are synthesized and a number of compounds uh, a number of health benefits are now available in these phytochemicals particularly they have antioxidant properties anti cancer properties anti inflammatory properties uh, ldl they reduce the ldl cholesterol and increase the high density lipoprotein cholesterol they will help they are helpful in oxidation platelet aggregation lowering anti platelets estrogenic anti apoplastics and antimicrobial so these all are these are the functions that are beneficial to our health and uh, not only this they also uh, helpful in the cardio production neuro protection hepato protection and inhibit age related cognitive decline this is one of the very important properties of the grape and what are the uh, studies that suggest that they modulate the cellular redox state prevent the ldl oxidation and improve the endothelial functions by which they lower the risk of cardiovascular diseases and uh, cellular other health benefits are associated with the grape phytochemicals and particularly in the cancer prevention so if you do not have the enough uh, antioxidant in your body through fruits and vegetable including grapes ultimately what will happen these reactive reactive oxygen species through chain reaction they will create the oxidative stress and ultimately damages the nucleus damages the dna and it leads to the growth of the tumorous cells so the grape seed extracts and many compounds in the grapes particularly the phenolics different kinds of the phenolics they are helpful in reduction in the cancer cells in the human body and ultimately which the antioxidant that is stabilizes the free radicals that are caused by the reactive oxygen reactive oxygen species and they are anti proliferative and apoplastic effect on the cancer cell Epo, uh, apoptotic effect means uh, you know that program cell death so this leads to the program cell death of the this uh, tumor cells and ultimately the body may react to make the cancer at a check level so these are the antiproliferative effect induced apoptosis cytotoxicity and apoptosis antioxidant activity this has already been established through the different uh, experiments in vivo and in vitro in the animal system as well as in human system
similarly it also affect the diabetic mellitus uh, diabetes and you know that in diabetes is increasing at alarming rate and 73 people in india is diabetic and it is basically because of lifestyle diseases and of course this grape and its compound particularly from the grape seed extracts they have different functions that is helpful in reduction in uh, tissue damage endothelial dysfunction and ultimately leading to the reduction in the diabetes in human and cardiovascular diseases particularly the phenolics particularly the ethylbenzoates they are helpful in uh, reduction in the cardio cardiovascular diseases i will be discussing it later how they they this will affect but at the moment it is reduce oxidation of the ldl cholesterol this will uh, helpful in lowering bp and reducing inflammation in urinary platelet aggregation so this is all the cases and most of the population are now obese and this particularly grape seed extracts this is helpful in decreasing the free fatty acid and triglyceride in white adipose tissues and ultimately it reduces the harmful effect of the fat so let us see what are the grape phenolics i am sorry that slide visibility may be low at this point of time so grapes basically has got all two types of phenolates uh, phenolics one is flavonoid and another one is non flavonoids in flavonoids you will find that flavon thiols flavonols and anthocyanin these three compounds are found uh, mainly in the grapes in flavonol 3 catechin epicatechin epigalactocatechin and epicatechin galate in flavonols quercetin camprol and mercetin compounds are present in anthocyanin cyanidin almost all six type of anthocyanin are present in the grape and uh, in among the non flavonoids phenolic acid it is the important compound present in the grapes and still beans particularly resveratrol and vinifery that are helpful in the cardio function of the humans and uh, both skin as well as fruit pulp and seed the contributes to the phenolics if we eat the grapes and petsil is also a source of the phenolics so you will find that hydrocinamic acid hydrobenzoic acid still been flavonoids flavon 3 tolls all are present in the in the skin anthocyanins are mostly concentrated but some of the varieties we have that are called tenturia type of varieties in where we have uh, anthocyanins in the skin as well as in the pulp and seeds also so coming to the phenolic acids it comprises of the cinnamic acid derivatives as well as benzoic acid de derivatives so basically cinnamic acid derivatives are having uh, nine carbon compounds and benzoic acid derivatives are having uh, seven Uh, six to seven carbon compounds. They are available in the free or conjugated forms like uh, cinnamic acid, cumaric acid, caffeic acid, fulvic acid. These are the examples of the hydrocinnamic acids and procatechic acid, gallic acid, cinnamic acids are found in case of grape. Flavonoids. Yes, it is one of the largest and diverse group of phytochemicals. With it is known for its bioactivity. and different kinds of flavonoids have been isolated from the grapes be it flavonols be it flavones flavonols flavonones anthocyanidins and isoflavonoids so flavonols are uh, most abundant and it is found in glycoside form in the grape skins and the examples of uh, flavonols in the red skin varieties are quercetin camprol mercetin and isoamantin while in white grapes variety quercetin and camprol der derivatives are most commonly found and i have tried to bring out here that uh, what are the flavonoids present in the uh, black grapes and green grapes these are also i mean available number of uh, for other flavonols it is a flavonol explorer.edu at you you can visit it and you can get the compounds of interest similarly flavonols it is another uh, group of flavonoids that are responsible for astringency and bitterness in grape so in black grapes 
it is found in majority compared to the green grapes. You can see here that uh, catechin 5.46 mg per 100 grams. Likewise, epicatechin 1.6 mg per 100. These are the main content. While in case of green grapes, the quantity is uh, towards the lower side. And proanthocyanidins, tannins are uh, another class of the flavonoids. They basically produce the astringency in the grapes and they bind and participate proteins and other various organic compounds and helps in escalation of blood clotting and reduction of blood pressure and they also reduce the serum lipid levels and also modulate the immune systems. You'll find a lot of tannins in wine grapes. Still bean, beans are still benoids. Basically, still benoids are phytoallergens and these are antibacterial compounds that produce D know to protect the plants from different kinds of fungal infections and toxins. And in grape, uh, this still beans was first identified in 1976 by Lenkek and Pierce. It was the resveratrol, and in wines, it was in, identified in 1992 by Simen and Crazy. Although it is it was not known that it was it is resveratrol or some other stabilizers, but it has been used since our traditional wine has been used in our uh, traditional medicine to treat the flavors, supportive dermatitis, gonorrhea, and hyperlipidemia. So it, it was known earlier. Now it has been named, and it has been now commercially exploited, either in uh, capsule form, tablet form, or we are using the wine for uh, because of its health uh, that its contribution to the health properties and basically these still benoids are also synthesized in the leaf epidermis and the skin of the grape berries but it is not in the flesh and it is available in two forms cis and trans form and the most commonly formed compound uh, i mean still benoids are resveratrol Tero is still being PC and viniferins. So you will find that black grapes are richer in respiratory compounds and other other still benoids. So coming to the friend paradox, because uh, it is well known that uh, Richard Cambin and Dusmetier they have basically reported that uh, high consumption of dietary fats among the French that would not lead to the high instances of the coronary heart diseases and atherosclerosis means deposition of uh, cholesterol crystals in the arteries that blocks the arteries and this was attributed to light to moderate consumption of regular amount of red wine by the French people and at the same time they also consume the uh, what you say that high fat content are high saturated fat diets, but at the same time they get the uh, low heart attacks, low heart diseases, and so on. So it was analyzed and proanthocyanidins and resveratrol in wines. This has been suggested to contribute the phenomenon termed uh, the French paradox. But still, the discussion is going on that whether it is really a true phenomenon or just an aesthetical illusion. But uh, the because the quantity of wine they take, the quantity of uh, what do you say that polyphenols they take, synthesis through wines they take, and the fat amount of fat they take, it is still a uh, question for research. So, coming to the because why the French paradox is happening, because there is a wonderful health benefit of the red wine. It, it uh, dilates the blood vessels, causing warm blood to move closer to the skin surface. And tannins protect against different heart diseases and lower the risk of heart attacks. It also uh, give the facial muscles to lose in and cheeks flush with color, causing you to look more relaxed and thus more attractive. It is also helpful in getting the better sleep. It is helpful in the burn flat because allergic acid dermatitis shows the growth of the fat cell slows the growth of the fat cells and lowers your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So ultimately, it is helpful in 
reduction in the fat in the body and also it is helpful in the uh, what you say that uh, warding of the different illness so that is why uh, wines are good for health grape anthocyanins basically all anthocyanins are present in grape and uh, what you say what you can say that in lower or higher amount but really grape is very rich in anthocyanin and the the anthocyanin class is also a part compared to the other family members or you can say that other orders you can see here this was the paper i have taken from uh, 2020 itself the vitals is uh, classified in case of the phenolics at it in a different group so european grapes contains about 17 pigments and the basic pigment is same the malvidine the cyanidine delphinidine pelargonidine pitonidine and pionidine so american grapes contain some more pigments it is having the 20 pigments so in green grapes we do not get uh, anthocyanins but of course in black grapes you get a lot of anthocyanins and that is having a lot of health properties and you can see here that uh, anthocyanin how helping it is in anti it is anti inflammation it increases the proliferation of the cells it increases cellular transformation it uh, it is a very potent antioxidant it also helpful in apoptosis particularly in case of the cancer cells and it induces the uh, cell cycle rest but the anthocyanin and resveratrol they act in different if you go for the synthesis uh, uh, during the berry development phases at the verizon stages you will find that uh, at the uh, anthro uh, resveratrol compounds particularly stibnoids are high during this period of time but at the uh, after that once the berry color changes and it goes towards the from green to the red or black you will find that this charcoal synthesis activity will enhance and stable synthesis activity will reduces and ultimately at harvest time you will get more of anthocyanin and less of this uh, less of this vegetal melatonin in, uh, is another compound though it was discovered in 17 70s but uh, irity et al they have reported uh, presence of melatonin in grapes and they said that it is not just a myth and maybe a panacea because of its uh, its effect on human health and the variety he has uh, analyzed for uh, the melatonin content and he found that nebbiolo it has got point uh, almost 1 nanogram per gram and croatia it was 0.87 nanogram per gram so melatonin has been established as one of the important compound or phytochemicals that has got tremendous value in human health so this is related to all related to the phytochemicals and how to detect phytochemical content and antioxidant potency so uh, we can go for the high performance liquid chromatography you can go for the nmr analysis full in so all to method is used and dpppas method is used particularly for the estimation of antioxidants so other uh, high cost equipment are also available to detect the phytochemicals in and different different uh, what you say that parameters within the these phytochemicals we can detect and now the different aspect also control the accumulation of phytochemicals in grapes like it is influence by the genotypes of the grape development and ripening regulation is also there in one two factor polystorage post harvest application single molecule molecular breeding and genetic manipulation these all affects the accumulation of phytochemicals in grape and also their potential benefits in the human health we at iari is working towards the enhancing the phytochemicals in grapes and we estimated uh, monomeric anthocyanin phenolics flavonoids and other phytochemicals in 17 grapes genotypes and we again found higher phenolics as well as total monomeric anthocyanins and flavonoids in the varieties which were uh, having the 
what you say that seed seed and uh, the variety having the red are blue color in nature it's like perifluorite is used as it is one of the species we have black prince punjab purple black muscat cardinal norang tempering rose sira cabernet sauvignon cabernet merlot so all the variety and we have also uh, in uh, correlated and enlarged the correlation coefficient and we found that uh, this total flavonoids total phenols these were highly correlated with the antioxidant activity of the grapes we also uh, breeding grapes for enhancing the different phytochemicals in grapes using the parents like mandolin angevine benguea abad bitter seedless perlic cassava hood cardinal ruby red a5 black muscat and we got that um, the different hybrids were having the higher anthocyanin higher phenolics higher phenolics compared to the parents we also did the phenolic profiling of the grape hybrids by the gcms and ms analysis and more than 30 compounds we uh, identified or we detected in the case of pusa norang and uh, about 30 26 14 11 and 11 compounds in our potential hybrids like r4p8 r4p7 r4p13 and r4p9 compared to the punjab purple and other varieties where we could detect 7 to 15 uh, phenolics in these grapes and based on our screening as well as our country i think what were material we have and what material we have developed particularly two varieties pusa norang and pusa metica they are excelling in the bioactive compounds having with the health benefits they are having a lot of phytochemicals in it uh, this pusa norang was released from iri in 1996 by the main breeder dr p c jindal who is no more with us medlin angevine he crossed it with the ruby red and this is probably the one of the uh, tenderer variety from our country first tenderer variety where we will get the pulp and peel color both are having the red color similarly manjiri medica it was developed recently from the nrc grape using the pusa norang one as one of the female parent they crossed it with the female parent and punjab msc purple it was basically released from the punjab agriculture university for cultivation in north india it has also got a lot of phytochemicals in this one we also compared this we took from the pu to the ana we also compared but pu also compared and they got that total phenolics and total phenolics and other phytochemicals were high they found they found the highest in case of pusa norang at all these stages be it green stage verizon stage early ripening and ripened stage in uh, compared to the other varieties so other varieties what we have developed from iri the thompson seedless pusa rosi pusa norang and uh, i'm also seated with the development of these four varieties uh, one is the pusa diti pusa trisar pusa swarnika and pusa purple seedless these two variety we released in uh, latest in 2020 and 2021 and fight by the state variety release committee other potential hybrids we are targeting for high nutritional values these are r2p7 and uh, r4p7 they are all having the tenderer one i mean having the dark red color of the juice and also the bold berries so in near future we will be targeting it particularly for the nutritional purpose not only that we are working towards the improving the nutritional properties using the bioregulators and we used methyl jasminate and benzathiazole and we found that when we used methyl jasminate at 10 millimolar it has improved uh, total phenolics to 1.4 amg per kg sorry 1.4 g per kg com- as compared to control which was having the 0.8 g per kg of the berries so similarly benzathiazole when we used at uh, the concentration of 0.4 millimolar and we got about 1.4 g per kg of the anthocyanins in flame seedless also used uh, different chemicals new chemicals and 
Intifan and FCC case, it is still found better. And then we also try to establish what are the different genes involved in the promotion of anthocyanin under the hot subtropical climate, how the uh, these changes are happening in the berries because uh, uneven ripening or uniform color in the berries, it is a problem in North Indian color grape, grape varieties, particularly color varieties which you grow in North India. So we analyze that how it affects the whole anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway and we found that about uh, uh, 31 unique genes that are related with that affects the anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway at different stages in the pathways and what we were that uh, I mean most striking one that UGFT and GST these are the two genes located here these are helpful in the accumulation of the anthocyanin in the berry they are very highly upregulated genes for the anthocyanin accumulation and we also tried to validate these genes using uh, RT-PCR uh, and we found that uh, almost 31 unique genes we could verify it through the in silico validation and we will also be doing the wet PCR for this one to validate this one. One more question many times people ask grape juice or wine which one is the best option? And a very good review. I would like you to read this review. Santra Maria Barbello and his group, they have published in 2020. And they basically compared different phenolic compounds, or we can say that different phytochemicals compound in red wine and uh, grape juice. And also, this uh, one another study by Copetti et al. They all reported that in case of red wine and in case of the juice from the colored grape varieties red wine always have had the higher flavonoids non flavonoids comp uh, compounds compared to the juice but once they analyze their bioefficacy or you can say that uh, they analyze their effects in improving the blood antioxidant activity or improving other health phenomena they found that both the things improved equally in case of uh, the treated animals as well as the human population where they tested this, this one. So ultimately they found that red wine and grape juice both are able to reduce the body mass index, waste circumstance, glycemia, plasma lipid peroxidation, total cholesterol, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, sorry, triglycerides, blood pressure and homocysteine levels. So the thing is that it's not that whether we should eat juice uh, or we should eat grapes or wine. The thing is that we must eat it. Without it, we will not get much of the antioxidant which we need, much of the phenolics which we need to maintain our health. Now the waste to value, in fact, a lot of grape promise is also generated through the juice industry as well as wine industry that contains the skin, the many pulps and seed. These are all good source of the phytochemicals, particularly the what you say dietary fibers as well as total phenolic compounds. So a lot of grape nutraceutical products that has been developed and uh, a very good work has been done by the NRC grape. Dr. Sumpur is here, he will be sharing it. The anthocyanin powder capsule from the variety they have developed uh, Manjiri Medica. So in conclusion, I would like to say that grape possess over more than 1,600 phytochemicals. This includes the phytochemical, I mean, polyphenols, antioxidant, and another compound. They are having impact on our health. And once we eat the grape, it provides the first line defense against many chronic diseases, many lifestyle diseases, be it uh, heart disease, be it diabetes, be it, you name the diseases that are related to our I mean, CVDs. So there are experimental evidence I did not share, but it suggests that if we eat 1.5 cup of grape daily, it will definitely have impact on our heart health, eye health, brain health, joint health, as well as cell health. So 
it has been suggested that we must eat at least 1.5 cup of grape in our daily uh, diet. So grape and grape products should be promoted in our daily diets, not only as a nutrient, but also as a healthy functional food as well. So overall benefit cannot be attributed to one component of the grapes that are uh, one components are the phytochemicals, one phytochemical that is present in the grape, but it is due to a regime between all the compounds present in the berries, seed, skin. So in, uh, I would like to come to end and I would like to say that their uh, requirement is their broad framework for research to understand the mechanism by which polyphenols from grape and grape seed come from dietary health benefits to the human. Of course, most of it is now available, but the exactly to pinpoint the more systematic studies or you can say that more precise studies are needed, particularly in case of the clinical uh, clinical trials in the human disease prevention. And appropriate biomarkers are required to develop to determine interaction between disease and polyphenols at cellular and subcellular level. And government policies could be directed more towards supporting crops that should form a greater part of our diet, particularly fruits and vegetables. And the grape is one. Uh, looking at the growth in the area as well as in production. And uh, moreover, at the last, I would like to say that we are uh, focusing on the production aspect. We are focusing on our management aspect, but our management aspect should also be diverted towards the improving the quality as well as improving the health, promoting the phytochemicals. And ultimately, it may help to build the uh, malnutrition free society. And at the same time, I would like to acknowledge, I have quoted the work of the many scientists in my this presentation. I would like to acknowledge all of them, though I have not mentioned in each and every slides. I would like to be thankful to Director IRI for providing the research facility in all and uh, my grape research team, particularly Dr. S.K. Singh, who is the leader of the grape breeding program, Dr. M.K. Burma and Dr. Chaulis Kumar and um, our PG students, in fact, most of the work has been conducted by through the PG students and I also would like to uh, acknowledge the collaborators from our divisions in the IRA who were helpful in uh, analyzing the phytochemicals and ensued particularly the NRC grapes who also gave the different fractions of the phenolics supported in the analysis of the different fractions of the phenolics and also the analysis of certain compounds from the seeds. So I would like to thank and I must thank again Professor Brahm Singh sir for giving me this opportunity, this platform to interact with you all on the health promoting phytochemicals in the grapes. Thank you one and all. Thank you Dr. Vibhi <coughs> Patel. I will come a little later. Uh, we keep on thanking each other but meanwhile I request uh, <coughs> Dr. Kamanwa to just uh, supplement the talk or uh, moderate the talk whatever he likes uh, within five to seven minutes or so uh, dr som please dr som are you there yeah yeah i'm here i'm just yeah so thank you very much dr vivi uh, patel it was a very nice talk and uh, Dr. Patel has given a pretty deep insight on uh, non-communicable diseases. Whether my uh, slides are visible, sir? Yeah. Ah. It is visible. So, good, very good lecture by Dr. Vivi Patel. Then uh, he has also given the consumption of fruits and vegetables due to which uh, if we take this uh, more than 3.5, 3.9 million uh, lives could have been saved. Phytochemicals available because it, the fruits and vegetables contain phytochemicals, more phytochemicals, major phytochemicals. Then uh, for this, uh, it needs grape is one of the fruits and which contains higher, uh, more more phytochemicals and for which uh, area and production also has given how it has been increased and uh, the work has been done by so many workers, including IRI people. So the, for this, uh, he has also given some of the flavonoids in colored and white seedless seeded grapes effect of bioregulators and nutraceuticals properties. And uh, again, uh, he has also given way forward like uh, biomarkers 
then additional clinical studies and all now just i will supplement what uh, he has given a lecture that grape is uh, mainly table resin and uh, juice and wine so, uh, very few percentage like 70% grape for table for purposes 20 25% we are using for uh, resin for uh, resin purpose and 2 to 3 are more, more than at the maximum 5% for uh, this purpose juice and wine so bc ratio is also very high in this one we get a very uh, good price here we have developed in uh, nrc grapes we have developed concepts concept are like this wine wine is made then juice purpose and juice and all high value secondary agriculture what we say it is based on high value compounds and average return from this approximately it is 10 to 12 lakh rupees per acre and with the bc ratio is 2.33 to, to 3.5 and uh, these are high value compounds which are already by, by shown by dr patel i would not uh, enter in this one antioxidant properties these are the antioxidants then the, the antioxidant properties of wine which were, were different varieties have been studied and um, we found actually merlot and cabernet sauvignon which have got higher concentration of catechin and uh, antioxidant capacities values so these are the works which have been carried out in uh, many of the countries and in many of the places including india we have also done cardio cardiovascular cardioprotective uh, effects of these uh, where, where the, all this phytochemicals contain flavonoids uh, then the grape so grape seed extract particularly grape seed extract it reduces monoaldenide uh, content of the heart and indicating reduction of oxidative stress which has already been done anti diabetics properties wound healing properties then anti inflammatory properties obesity all these things have been uh, well said and well explained in continuation of this NRC grapes, ICR NRC grapes has done some work like uh, extraction, isolation, characterization of bioactive photophytochemicals from grapes and its byproducts. Grape promes prune waste and grape seed. Grape seed, this is a preliminary study may have been done on this total phenol, anthocyanin, flavonoids, antioxidant potential. Then extraction by done by solvent extraction methods, purification, purification of entrenched fractures by ion exchange resin columns by preparatory by SPLC methods and all this. Cold press method was used again for uh, grape seed oil enriched, uh, particularly vitamin E and we have done this work by characterization work using GCMS, MS, LCMS, HR GCMS and HR LCMS. So all these equipments were used and we have done this work on this one. Pure anthocyanin from uh, Manjri Medica is one of the best varieties what we could get so far in the country. That is the, this name is Manjri Medica, which has got uh, higher, uh, antho, higher amount of anthocyanin, higher juice recovery of 70% and above as compared to all other varieties. 4 to 6 gram of anthocyanin per kg fresh wet has been, it is a practical yield what we have seen, what we could see this. Then we have done this purification, a purification based on the affinity of chromatography, we have done this. Anthocyanin capsules we have, anthocyanin capsules we have made. And this was made by spray drying method, anthocyanin capsules. And we have seen this, uh, it is doing very well. And uh, per capsule 50 milligram has been uh, added. And economic yield, uh, we could get it that is a 120 capsule from 1 kg of grape only. Maybe it is a cost of 1 kg grape is 50 rupees, but 120 capsules if we get, uh, and that uh, dose is also recommended two capsules per day. So we can end uh, and, uh, this one. Imagine we have also done a vitamin E enriched uh, grape seed oil from Manjari Medica, and we could uh, test it with the superfluid extraction method and cold spray. we compared this and the, if we see the codex standard the codex standard says is this, uh, the recovery is this much whereas through this one this super with this method super fluid extraction method we have got so much uh, this one extraction vitamin e we have also developed the encapsulated na nano formulation of grape phytochemicals for food fortification but this method but the slow it has got low stability low bioavailability and it needs innovative formulations then high value nutraceutical products also we have done this and food fortification also with the work is being uh, done it is being carried out Phyto grape phytochemical fun functionalized nano formulation for plant disease management we have used ketosan kytosan uh, with this uh, again uh, phytochemicals and we studied this against a targeted pest and death diseases in grapes in our uh, farm and uh, this has, we could see that assessment of improvement in in vitro and bioefficacy studies also we have done this and assessment under field condition is going on plant this one this way and we could say that we could check it for uh, uh, anthracnose as well as even downy mildew also and the diseases the control of diseases were very 
method it is very effective so work is going on we have initiated the work and now if we talk about this one what could be done so it is my uh, this one is protocol should be standardized for isolation of targeted bioactive compounds from grape and its by products then advanced formulation technologies also be explored to improve the bio accessibility of the phytochemicals nano formulations nano emulsion of grape formulations having targeted health benefit it should be explored again then that should be the efforts also should be made to commercialize the phytochemical these grape we are doing this we have studied but nobody it has not been commercialized yet so now this needs to be commercialized based on the fortified foods or functional food c1 so these are the things efforts also it should be made to functionalize the nano materials which could be eco friendly plant diseases and health management so all these things secondary agriculture also should be explored in a grape for sustainability of this industry industry also should come now as i told that 4.5 kg 4.5 gram to 5 gram we can extract anthocyanin per kg per per kg of fresh grapes so all these things comes together we should give that the industry should sustain so that way we have to do the work as dr patel has told you to, to study on so and so aspect likewise this grape yield uh, value uh, this one screening of those variety for particular uh, phytochemicals needs to be done some of the varieties like manjuri medica which we did for this one there might be again varieties we have to breed varieties for particular phytochemicals and so on so that way mm-hmm. Um, whatever the work I heard, uh, Mr. NRC Graves has done, I have just presented and supplemented with the Dr. Uh, Patels. I thank you, uh, Dr. Brahma Singh sir, Honorable uh, Chairman of this uh, BSHF Padmashri. Padmashri. Then uh, Dr. Pritam Kaliya sir, ex uh, former director, former head of uh, division uh, IRA, and uh, Dr. Patel also, and all my viewers, all my listeners. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shom. Excellent uh, moderation come supplementation come uh, entire research in a capsule uh, at NRC Grape. Nice capsule. You have Thank you, sir. Given. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, very, very good one. Is, uh, is there any question, my dear friend? Can you just put it? Very informative talk. Grape is spread a lot a pesticide ah patel sir and uh, both of you just defend it you uh, spray a lot of pesticide on grape so what is no the no no i hear here i will who, who, who wants to answer you show yes, okay you answer you I would. you you let me answer first sir because uh, then no no let him react. Let, let, him will... ah, let him react yes sir. yes sir we are not uh, yes. here let me answer first no, no, anyway. People are just uh, getting afraid of uh, so many uh, fungicides and so many pesticides, but it is not the case. We have developed Annexure 5 where only label claim, label claim fungicides or molecules are being entered in that uh, Annexure 5 and those only being recommended to the farmers. We are using weather advisory now. Based on the weather advisory, we are guiding the grape growth and we have reduced the number of uh, fungicide sprays and now it has come down. So now that is the reason. We are good, good. My, 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 my request my request to you all these things should go to the farmer uh, patel sir you, you want to add something patel sir you want to add something yes unmute that's what i want to unmute unmute i hope patel, that i am more audible uh, now you are audible hello okay sir thank you, you are... in fact uh, the grape in north india it is free from pesticide because uh, in North Indian grape growing, we do not spray any single chemical to get the grape, except if How much grape is there? there is emergency India? of uh, this powdery mildew, then only we spray. In, in tropical, no, no, just a minute. In tropical, uh-huh. again, in tropical region, and maybe, I mean, starting from Maharashtra to Tamil Nadu, they use the pesticides and what Dr. Sunkwar told that I fully, I mean, endorse his uh, statement. That's what I wanted to try. To, I was trying to tell. Thank you, sir. Anyway, you have taken care of the North India and the very less use of that. But uh, some concern is a very valid. How much do we produce? Uh, yes. Most of the grapes we produce there in Maharashtra, uh, if I am not wrong. 
and uh, my request to Som and his team in ICA that the farmer should be uh, very, 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 uh, uh, what's a conversant with all these activities that they should not use the uh, pesticide. And this is the era of organic. I think Som Saab is going to have a webinar tomorrow on organic somewhere. So that organic side we are going. Uh, next question, please. In that organic, that pesticide part uh, uh, will be taken care of. Uh, is there any other question, please? Uh, I think uh, it seems it's not there. Dr. Kali Sir. Saab, uh, I was uh, looking for you. Uh, you were missing. So uh, now since you have come, you kindly uh, add, add value to the talk and uh, um, uh, see what all uh, you can uh, congregate the speakers. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We have had a very nice uh, exposure uh, to grapes uh, from both the speakers today. Uh, Dr. Uh, Vivi Patel has uh, uh, taken us right from beginning to end, uh, telling us all about uh, phytochemicals and how the grape is rich in various uh, phytochemicals. And uh, the important thing is that the futuristic approach, uh, they are calling, which uh, normally we tell in every crop that uh, the crop which is uh, rich in already naturally rich, naturally fortified, we have to delve dense varieties for those uh, phytochemicals. So that program is also uh, there that they have taken up breeding program and shown uh, some of the varieties, how they have come up with the new hybrids, which are going to be the uh, future program and uh, uh, besides that uh, uh, telling us about uh, the various uh, phytochemicals uh, flavonols uh, uh, phenols uh, and other things and how they are, can be ex extracted uh, what are the important and also about melatonins which pomegranate people also men mentioned about melatonins in their uh, wines that they develop from pomegranate and it's good that uh, grape also is uh, having that melatonin but we can future, in future develop uh, these melatonin rich varieties so that we can have more uh, melatonin coming from the varieties <laughs> and uh, can develop good wine. Uh, 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 besides that, uh, uh, the supplementation and also that uh, uh, the RNA sequencing analysis uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Patel has shown, which is very important that we always say uh, use of uh, genomic resources uh, genomic tools and uh, marker assisted programs. It's important that uh, we use the recent technologies and also as uh, uh, Director NRCG has mentioned about various uh, extraction and isolation uh, programs that uh, the Institute has taken up, which is very important and the purification of anthocyanin, developing anthocyanin capsules and uh, nanoformulation that they are doing and they have futuristic program in their uh, uh, institute uh, coming up. So in, in, we expect that in future we will have better grapes coming up and uh, uh, especially that uh, they say that bioactive compounds, nutraceuticals, uh, we always look forward that uh, these uh, uh, bioactive compound uh, crops should be developed so that industry related to nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, cosmetic uh, industry, they should develop in the country. They are there in the developed world but are in, at infancy in our country because we do not have these nutraceutical or bio compound rich varieties so far. It's only natural that variation is present that's being exploited. But in future, if we need to harness that uh, natural potential, we have to follow the good science uh, bio, uh, bio fortified varieties. So far, people mentioned that they, they have the bio fortified varieties, but they are not actually. They are naturally bio fortified. They have the nutrient and we develop varieties for uh, farmer traits and then analyze for uh, quality point of view. But in future, using these uh, new breeding uh, tools and techniques that we are having, uh, they will be helpful in uh, working on these aspects. And uh, as also uh, Dr. Patel mentioned that 1.5 cup uh, uh, of grape daily is good for improving our health uh, and uh, oh, berries, seed, and uh, the uh, epidermis, uh, I mean, the skin of the uh, grape is also being exploited for various uh, nutrients, uh, which has been highlighted very nicely. And I hope that uh, 
these uh, viewers today must have been educated uh, uh, with the uh, nutritional as well as health benefits of the grapes and in the future what kind of grapes we'll be having so with that i thank both of uh, the presenters today that we have had a very nice uh, excellent presentation exposing the viewers and us to the different uh, uh, side of the grapes but i have one thing that uh, they have not ta talked about the temperate grapes uh, because no we know that uh, in kinar district of himachal pradesh angur is grown and anguri is the local traditional wine which is there since years uh, that should have been compared with the new wine we develop uh, how uh, what is the nutritional variation amongst these two and how that is helping uh, those people of uh, kinar uh, having long life thank you oh. <clears throat> Okay, now it is my pleasant uh, duty to thank profusely all the three, Dr. V. V. Patel, Dr. Som, and uh, Dr. Kalia. Um, starting with uh, Dr. Patel, what a knowledge he has got on uh, grapes. Um, we solid talk we had today, solid talk. And the guy was speaking with great comfort. He was not tense at all, with great comfort. Uh, so that is speaks of a, a depth of knowledge he has got on this uh, juicy berry uh, grape. And uh, you know, the country had enough food and we are looking for the nutritional security. So the fruits and vegetables are heading, rightly heading, scientists and all stakeholders are rightly heading to provide nutritional security to the country. And Dr. Patel reminded you that this is the year of, uh, international year of fruit and vegetables. So we have to, uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, enthusiastically uh, educate the people that what all the fruit and vegetable are horticulturists, scientists and all stakeholders are doing to have the country on the map of that is not only the food security, but we have achieved or we are going to achieve the nutritional security also the potential we are highlighting, uh, whether it is a pomegranate or what is a grape or uh, your broccoli or whatever, or uh, uh, and number of your uh, medicinal plants are there. So uh, I think uh, with this, uh, uh, I'm sure the weavers, I don't know the number, but they must have been greatly benefited. Those who missed attending this, I request them, they should uh, go to the YouTube, the video is available. Because they, they talk as usual. This also is full of lot of knowledge. The latest one, keeping in view what the future uh, horticulture is going to be and uh, what we are adding for when I say we, the scientists and other stockholders. Uh, Dr. Jindal says very informative talks uh, to speakers with we could have some cold desert grape as mentioned in grape uh, culture by Himaj HP uh, something. All, uh, all any, anyway, Dr. Uh, Kalia has pointed out, kindly take care of the temperate region also. And temperate region, I tell you, because I have got the experience of working in that cold desert, uh, will give you a better quality grape than what you have got. But only thing you have to develop the suitable uh, varieties and the protocol for that. And keeping in view, uh, targeting the particular uh, the phytochemicals. And in this phytochemicals, I want to give a word of caution uh, to uh, the scientists. Kindly don't be uh, very happy by <coughs> analyzing the uh, phytochemicals in a uh, fruit crop. Go a little ahead. Find out the bioavailability of them, their absorption in the body, that they are available. They are not just gone in and passed on uh, as such uh, without absorption, has got no meaning. Uh, however rich they are, they should be uh, available or absorbed in the body. 
So that bioavailability uh, part also should be simultaneously taken care of and as and when we give the presentation that aspect should also be included. With these words I think we have taken enough time uh, and uh, I again thank uh, Dr. Patel who has just uh, taken the time what he was allocated within that. I don't know how could he manage it and a uh, lot of information he has given which were supplemented by <coughs> Dr. Som and uh, the uh, what are the futuristic programs of that uh, NRC grape? We are really lucky to have Dr. Som in our uh, program. At least we could uh, know what all <coughs> programs are there with the National Research Center. Uh, and I am sure the viewers must have been benefited by this. With these words, I thank one and all from the bottom of my heart. And I request uh, the next talk can be on display. If somebody is attentive, kindly display the next talk next Tuesday. Uh, we had uh, palms, granite, we had grape, now banana. Banana for health and happiness. Uh, we are going <coughs> to have it on 14th, same time. With these words, I once again thank one and all and good night. <coughs> good night, sir. Thank you so 